this tutorial we're going to learn how to add a camera move to our scene. So we have our hiker and uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually extend the scene out. So to do that I'm going to actually change the length of the scene, the uh, scene's duration. I'm going to do that by dragging this little red flag. I'm going to drag it out to 120. So I can see here that at my stop I've hit 120 frames. And I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to add what's called an action template. I'm still using the same hiker template that I made, um, that I used in the last tutorial. But I have a pre-made animation that I made with that template and I'm now going to drop it in. So now you can see that that's animating and actually everything dropped out the back and that's because the background layers actually only go up to 60. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock those. And I'm going to select their frames at 120 and hit F5 to extend my uh, exposure. I'm going to do the same for the bird. And I'm also going to turn that bird layer back on. So now everything continues all the way to the end of 120. And so does my animation for my hiker. With that done, I can now add my camera move. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a camera. And to do that, it's the same, uh, same principles as adding the pegs or the drawing tool or the drawings or the color card. I'm going to go to insert and hit camera. And at the bottom of my scene, I now have a camera layer. And I'm going to right click on that, go to insert, and add a peg for it. So you can see here that actually my, cam my bounding box for my camera has actually turned purple like a drawing layer would. And when I hit its peg, it turns yellow, again like a peg would in animate mode. So with that on, and I'm going, I am now going to add my camera move. Uh, I think I'm going to start around 25. I'm going to hit F6 to add my peg. You can see it showed up right there. And I think I'll go to, let's go to 110 and add another peg right there. This time I'll use my keyframe, I'm probably not a peg, uh, keyframe, add a keyframe there. And as you can see, it's actually already got the black line, which means it's going to animate. I just have to move the frame. And I'm actually going to use the, translation, the translate tool up here, and I'm going to click on this red arrow, which actually means I can only, it'll turn pink, which means the only thing that will move is left and right along the x-axis. I'm going to drag it so that it moves along and hits that right edge. It looks like the background is moving, but it actually it is the camera. And I can prove that by going to our top view. And our top view, I'm going to back out a little bit. So you can see these black lines. These black lines are actually um, the very top of our flat layers. So they're going to just appear as a line. Now if I go to the beginning of our animation again, you can see that right here is where our keyframe starts, and you can see this yellow V, which actually represents our camera, is moving to the right slowly. So that means the camera is literally moving, not the background and not the characters. So I go back to my camera view. I can actually do something cool. Let me go back to the top view real fast. I can actually do something really cool. I'm going to select my bush layer, and I'm going to turn animate mode off. My bush layer select, I'm going to use the translate tool and pull that forward to right about here. So what I've actually done is I've created a multiplane. You can see now that the bush is off the edges because it's actually come closer to the camera. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to move that back a little bit to the side right about here. I'm actually going to move it up again a little bit too. There we go. So now, when I move my animation, you can see how the bush is actually moving a little bit faster than the background art. And that's because I'm actually performing a multi-plane, where one piece of art is closer to the camera than the other, creating a sense of depth. Actually, with the animate mode still off, I'm going to move this just a little bit so you can't see the edge in the camera. Now if I go back, still works. So with that done, I'm actually going to add a little bit of a zoom too. So we have 
I'm going to go back to my uh, camera peg. And I'm going to go back to... I'm actually going to add one more view, similar to the top view, which is the side view. And you can see my camera is now red, so I'm going to turn that back to yellow, back to the animate mode. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go to the last frame, and I'm actually going to dolly in or zoom the camera in a little bit. So as the animation goes, the camera moves closer to the background art. And if I go back to the camera view, you can see now that the art is actually even bigger than it was before, and that's because the camera is moving closer. So if you look at the top and bottom edges, you can see how the camera is actually zooming in or dollying in toward our character. And that, go ahead and let that animate. is how you have the camera move. And one more thing besides that, like any other animation that you, that interpolates, you can also set the eases. So I can go to a parameter of my, uh, the easing parameters, and I can go for my camera peg. I can go ahead and soften that start. And I'm gonna hit apply next and go to the last keyframe and soften that up too and apply that. So now when I do my animation again, Starts off a little bit slower, and stops a little bit slower. And a final note, you can only use the transform tool on pegs and other elements in the camera, top, side, or perspective views. And that's the camera move.